Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. And uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of fun. And we learn some things along the way. And who knows what else. <laughs> Okay, I got the carbonator out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Then I'm taking my little things, my little cleaners, my little wires. Squeaky, squeak, squeaky, squeak, 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 in and out, squeaky, squeak. Now, something on these, some of these jets, like this one, the jet holes are offset. So what you got to do is go at an angle like that to go all the way through. See how that's at an angle? Hopefully you can see that. So, because they're offset, but I like to go in at an angle and make sure they're completely open and you go in the end. Squeaky, squeak, 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 squeak. Get them all clean. Then you take this here compressor-nated air. Blow that crap out of there. Get it out. So, put this last jet in and then we're going to put this old Kaba detrader back on. And uh, then I'll go to the next step. Be right back. Now, before you go hooking up your power pack and everything, take a little file, flat file, rat tail file, whatever, and clean up that ground. Clean it up. Get you a good ground going. Yeah, get some nice shiny aluminum there. Same with your brass, with your ground wire on your power pack. See that? Got to go and have a ground there. Let's make that, might as well have a good ground. Get that brass all shined up. Only take a, only take a second or two, you know? Look at that. Woo, all shiny. Let's take it. Shine that brass. It's all about the brass, about that brass, about that brass. I'm gonna take a little second, get that thing all shiny. Ooh, ooh, look at that, woo, that's gonna be nice. Of course, I dumped my nut and my washer in there. I get it. I get it. There he is. I got it. I gotta get the washer now. I get it. There he is. So, clean up them grounds. All over the place. Clean them up. Yeah. 
Clean it up. Clean it up. I'll drop it again. I get it. I get it. I get it again. All right. Yeah. Clean up them grounds really good. Ain't no need to have no rusty grounds on there. Ooh, look at that. Look at that nasty. Get that out of there. Only take a sec. Only take a second. Come on, clean. Come on, clean. Get all that yuck off of there. I got three of them here. Get them all. All right, so you get the idea. Clean up your grounds. Make them shiny, pretty. Yeah, you good ground. Okay, we got me a couple of new NGK B8HSs in there. Use it. Use it. Put you some dielectric, put it right on the ceramic. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. Put it on the ceramic. That'll help you get the boot off next time. Rub it all around the ceramic. Then just a little over the tip, like that. All over the ceramic, then a little over the tip. A little dab, dielectric, is gonna do you. I'll stay. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Ooh, we're almost ready to find out what that uh leak's gonna be about. All right. So if you look. Organized all those wires. Remember how messy it was. All up in there, I cleaned it. I got these wires zippy tied right here. I got this safety interlock that goes to the in gear. You can see when I shift it in gear, it won't let you pull over. I got that all wired up right here, or just a zip tie, so it tucks it into the block. Everything's neat over here. The Cabo de Natures is all cleaned up, I hope. I mean, we ran her through the cleaner and cleaned her up. She looks a whole lot better than she did. So, um, oh, I forgot something. We got to put on the choke knob. You remember how that choke wouldn't even work? It was all stiff. Butterfly was froze. Look at there now. Ooh, whoop, ooh. She works good. Remember how all these old coil wires were off everywhere and other wires? We got them all tucked in. I don't have the little cover for that. I'm gonna have to fabricate something. But don't she just look a whole lot better and look like what a 40 horsepower two cycle motor should look like um, you know all you have to do <laughs> is take care of them I'm gonna tell you a little story about this motor at the end of it all but right now I think I'm gonna find a hose connector for one of these weird round Suzuki DT40s and we are gonna get this thing in the tank and see if she'll pop over. I'll be right back Okay When I was going to put the uh, Quick fuel connector on I was messing with the hoses and stuff and found that So the fuel pump nipple here. There's some there, but not a whole lot. So I changed it out Changed the fuel pump out. I also opened this filter and cleaned it. Oh, well, I guess I tightened it up good. I opened this up, cleaned it out. It wasn't real bad. Now I'm doing the hoses, but uh, don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'm gonna try and get you in there. Did you see that fuel pump right there? It says Yamaha. This is a Suzuki DT40. Don't you know? But I had that Yamaha pump, and it looked like it would not only bolt properly to the bosses and the, 
in the motor there, but it had the larger style OMC connectors because I didn't have a Suzuki Quick Connect. I got some, but they're the smaller kind. So I'm putting an OMC one on there for now. And that'll get me started. But yeah, I'm going to try that Yamaha pump. And got this all cleaned up and just routing the hoses. I'll be back. Okay. So I've got her basically buttoned up. She cleaned up actually very nice. That don't mean it's going to run nice. <laughs> that just means I did everything I could to hope to make it run nice. I've got everything over here tucked in really nice. Um, fuel hoses, you can see they're all run nice, everything tucked in real nice, everything zip tied. I took the filter off, cleaned it real good. Um, so, got the carb all cleaned. The only thing, I, you know, I'll have to address that them bolt and chunk of string we'll see what happens after the um, attempt to start it in, in this area that's all open who knows we'll see but um, yeah it uh, it cleaned up nice looks like a two-stroke twin cylinder single carb 40 horsepower motor now all nice so let's get her in the tank see what she'll do you're gonna see what I see I'll be right back tank you is gonna see what I was gonna see we see what she do or don't do I squeezed the bulb I noticed I got a little fuel leak right there where I stretched that Tigon line that'll be easy fix I don't think it'll stop it from starting or anything oh choke works good now we got her choked all right let's see what we get now I did squirt triflow in the cylinder so 
Um, she's going to be smoking.
know, as far as that uh, goofy looking head bolt goes, it ain't leaking, but I'm going to take it out and find out what's up with the rope. So, I don't see no leaky head gasket. <laughs> going to do I see no leakage from yon rope bolt not to see the rope so let me see if I can zip that out of there find out what's going on what's going on what's going on why'd they do this why do you think they do this? It's not leaking even though it's got a little gappage there. I'm just curious. You know what? I don't think... I think that bolt's the right side. I think they just... Let me see. Tied something around it. I think maybe it stuck out, the, the actual aluminum. We'll see. Yeah, it's just that they just tied something. They were probably tying up this plastic CD box, which is not very good. It's held on there by one little bolt, one 10 millimeter bolt. So it does jump around. I don't know if he was trying to tie that, but there's nothing wrong with that. Now there's still that gap in the head gasket, but it, it don't leak. Now. Yeah, see, it was tied around the, the part of the aluminum that sticks out, not the, not the nut itself, or bolt itself. So she don't leak and she runs cool. It would, this motor's going to still need a, a water pump impeller, but, hey. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So... And then I still need to hook up a kill switch to it, um, which I will do. But as far as the head gasket goes, it ain't leaking. It don't. I mean, there is that little space in there, but it don't seem to affect the running of the motor. But she's a beauty. All righty, now. So I kind of told you, I was going to tell you a little something, something about this here motor. And I am. As soon as I get my camera set up. Now I think that's a little bit too high. Let's try that. All right. So I told you I was going to tell you something about this Suzuki. I told you right off the bat it was owned by a commercial fisherman. I also told you um, in a video three or four before this one I showed you a little 9.9 .9 Suzuki that came in here and I told you it was owned by a commercial fisherman as well and that poor little Suzuki 99 if you go back and watch the video was just abused and beaten all to pieces I even remember saying in the video I think I'll tell this guy don't bring this one back it's just abused that bad and been used up that that much 
Well, who do you think is the owner of this DT40? Got any ideas? That's right. Now, here was the deal. He came in when you saw the engine, this DT40, in the first video, part one. How bad it was. And I looked it over, did the facts check, and then I called him. And he just lives right down the road. And he was heading out in a couple days. He said he would stop in on his way home. I said, that would be great. He stopped in. I went over everything this thing needs. Um, I offered him a new, not new, I offered him a used uh, coil CDI pack for half of what you can get them on the inner screen for. I told him the car would need completely tearing apart, clean, possibly a new needle and seat and gaskets. I told him it's going to need a new water pump impeller at the least, which it does and it will get. Um, I showed him the head gasket and said that's a that's a after we get all the other stuff done, maybe or maybe maybe not we'll you know until I can get it to run and see what I got going on back there I don't know so told him that um, wires galore shorts everywhere um, frozen things on the car bridge, just a mess this motor was so I said here's what I can do it for carried a plus add that one I carried a one divided into that and said and, and drop this down and two and carry the three and then and I said, there it is. And he did the, uh, Edith, I'm coming to see you. I think it was Elizabeth. I'm coming to join you. He didn't want to spend the money. I said, well, where we're at right now, you owe me one hour labor for telling you what all's wrong with it. I showed him the numbers, the facts check, the compression, everything. He goes, here's your one hour labor. I ain't putting a penny into that thing. So, your choice. He said, take it to the scrap heap. I said, the engine's repairable. It just cost you that much. And I said, you know, that's a lot of money, but probably be a pretty decent motor commercially. I mean, these are tough, these old single cylinder twin, single carb twin cylinders. Uh, and he didn't want to spend the money. He said he didn't want to put more into it because parts are hard to get for it and who knows you know I don't know if the lower units any good on this thing in my tank I can put it in and out of gear I know that but I uh, can't really say much more about it than it goes in and out of gear until you put it on the back of the boat and run it which now that I own this motor um, I will do that and don't get me wrong for everything I did to this motor to save it it would not have been cost effective to him just to drop that lower unit, as salty as this motor is, take apart the water pump, put in the new impeller, put it back on, and then deal with all the other issues. Um, he's right, he could probably buy a later model Yamaha or Suzuki or Honda or something for what I would charge him to do everything what I did. But um, that's the case on this little motor, and I end up with a lot of motors like that. But I'm straight up honest with the people. I go, here's my hourly rate, here's the parts breakdown, I can give you this used part for half, on and on and on down the road, and then I show them. And then it's their call. A lot of times they take the engines and go back and they throw them in the heap themselves. Um, but on this one, because the compression was there, and I happen to have um, a coil CD pack, I actually found two of them. Two of them. And, uh, and this one got me my spark back. So um, still needs a lot, but that's the story on it. That's how I ended up with it. And of course, before I could sell it, I would change the lower unit oil, put a water pump impeller in it, and get it out on my boat and give it a good test run before I would sell it to anybody. So that's the story on it, but uh, we got her going and brought her back to life. Now on these Suzuki's, um, these twin cylinder single carbs, I had a 30 just like this, about the same exact year, everything, same color, everything. 
and it ran just like this thing. It, it never did idle smooth. It was always a kind of a chuggy engine, and they're a little bit loud, I find. Um, uh, that's just this engine. Um, they'll never run as smooth as, say, a three-cylinder 70 horsepower that has a cylinder and carburetor per cylinder. If those are all linked in sync, each cylinder has its own reed, its own carb, they'll just run a lot smoother. Um, when you start what I call reed sharing on these twin cylinder single carbs and stuff, um, there's no way to regulate that fuel oil mixture into the cylinders perfectly, the same exact amount at the same time from top and bottom. It, it's just the nature of the design. Um, so um, the Yamaha Enduros kind of run the same, you know, they're a little bit shaky and loud and idle, but then they, they really buzz when you <laughs> crank them up and start pouring the fuel into the cylinders. But uh, these are good, tough motors. I had that 30 on my, uh, I used to have an 18-foot Lund, uh, Alaskan model, they called it, and I had a 30 on it, um, identical to this one, and uh, it was just a beast. And I kept it on that, in, that boat for seven years and ran it every season until I sold the boat with the motor and it ran perfect when I sold it. Um, so that's the story on this one and I hope you enjoyed this little one, two, three series of the DT40 and I want to thank you for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with Cody Bass.